He would have been before the uh, playoffs. Yes, yeah. he it's a public meeting of the board of Philippine board of pensions and retirement is being conducted in person at the board's conference room to the board's offices on the 16th floor of 210 Sunshine. Pursuant to section 21-1503 of the Philadelphia Code, electronic recordings of this meeting will be made through Microsoft Teams programs technology and by an audio recording. Electronic recording will be made available to the public online on the board's website without charge within any time meetings. Please note that you can consent to such recording by attending, participating, or speaking at the meeting. Uh, before we begin, I'd also like to welcome uh, City Controller Christy Gray back to the floor. Um, Hi. Good morning. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Um, and I'd also like to note that we have William Sierra from the airport police here, and we will uh, officially further welcome him later today. Um, our first order of business is a motion to adopt the rules of order that the board is approved and used for in person public meetings that are electronically recorded. Mm -hmm. The purpose of this is to help ensure accurate and complete audio and audio visual recordings. The meeting occurred to comply with our code requirements. The well, first item is to adopt these procedures for today's meeting. The motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion on the board? Hearing none, we'll go to the roll. Brian? I approve. Approved. Marsha? Approved. Sherilyn? Approved. Roosevelt? Approved. Paul? I approve. Kristen? Approved. And Carol? Motion <laughs> carries unanimously. Item two, a motion to approve the minutes from our October 26th meeting was made and properly seconded. In any discussion on this? Hearing none, we'll go to the roll. Brian? Approved. Nesta? Approved. Marsha? Approved. Sherilyn? Approved. Roosevelt? Approved. Paul? Approved. Christy? Um, Absent. Carol? Approved. Motion carries seven to zero with one out of extension. And three motions to approve 113 pension applications and 66 withdrawal applications have been made and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Go to the roll, Brian. I approve. Vanessa? Approved. Marsha? Approved. Geraldine? Approved. Rosenthal? Approved. Paul? Approved. Christine? Approved. Uh, and Carol? Approved. Motion to carry unanimously and moves us into section four, case 4A. A motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Arthur Anderson was made at section eight and discussion on case 4A. Hearing none, Brian? Approved. Vanessa? Approved. Marsha? Approved. Marilyn? Approved. Roosevelt? Approved. Paul? Approved. Christy? Approved. And Carol? Approved. Motion carries unanimously. Case 4B. A motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Tanya Agra was made and seconded. Any discussion on case 4B? Brian? I approve. Nessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Sherilyn? Denied. Roosevelt? I approve. Paul? I approve. Christy? Approved. And Carol? Approved. Motion carries 5 to 3. Case 4C, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Renard Bournette was made and seconded. Any discussion on case 4C? Hearing none, Brian? All abstained. Vanessa? Denied. Marshall? Denied. Sherilyn? Denied. Roosevelt? Abstained. Paul? Abstained. Christine? Denied. And Carol? Abstained. Motion Gill 0 to 4 with four noted abstentions. Case 4D, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Nana's capacity was made and seconded. Any discussion on case 4D? Hearing none, Brian? I approve. Vanessa? Denied. Martha? Denied. Sherilyn? Denied. Roosevelt? I approve. Paul? I approve. Christy? I approve. And Carol? I approve. The motion carries 5 to 3. 
Case 4E, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Robert de Blasio was made and seconded. Any discussion? Case 4E. Hearing none, Brian. I approve. Vanessa, approve. Marsha, approve. Carolyn, approve. Roosevelt, approve. Paul, approve. Christy, approve. And Carol, approve. Motion carries unanimously. Case 4F. A motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Brian Beats was made and seconded. Any discussion on case 4F? Very none. We'll go to the roll. Brian? I approve. Vanessa? Approve. Marsha? Approve. Sherilyn? Approve. Roosevelt? Approve. Paul? Approve. Christine? Approve. And Carol? Approve. Motion carries unanimously. Case 4G. A motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Andrew Gibson was made and seconded. Any discussion on case 4G? Hearing none, Brian? All abstained. Vanessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Carolyn? Denied. Roosevelt? Abstained. Paul? Abstained. Christy? Denied. And Carol? Abstained. Another motion fails 0 to 4 with 4 unit abstentions. Case 4H, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Robert Hayley was made and seconded. Any discussion on case 4H? Hearing none, Brian? I approve. Nessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Sherilyn? Denied. Roosevelt? I approve. Paul? I approve. Christy? I approve. And Carol? I approve. A motion carries 5 to 3. Case 4I, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Howard Lawler were made and seconded. Any discussion from case 4I? Hearing none, Brian? All abstained. Vanessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Sherilyn? Denied. Roosevelt? Abstained. Paul? Abstained. Christy? Denied. And Carol? Abstained. The motion fills 0 to 4 with 4 noted abstentions. Case 4J, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Donald Rebel was made and seconded. Any questions on case 4J? Hearing none, Brian? I approve. Vanessa? Approve. Marsha? Approve. Sherilyn? Approve. Roosevelt? Approve. Paul? Approve. Christy? Approve. And Carol? Approve. Motion carries unanimously. Case 4K, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Brandon Levito was made and seconded. Any discussion on 4K? Hearing none, Brian? All abstained. Vanessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Sherilyn? Denied. Roosevelt? Abstained. Abstained. Christy? Denied. And Carol? Abstained. The motion fails 0 to 4 with 4 noted abstentions. Case 4L, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for voices less was made and seconded. Any discussion on 4L? Hearing none, Brian? I approve. Vanessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Sherilyn? Denied. Roosevelt? I approve. Paul? I approve. Christy? Approved. And Carol? Approved. The motion carries 5 to 3. Case 4M, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Edward D. Waters. It's made and seconded. Any discussion on 4M? Hearing none, Brian? Approved. Vanessa? Marsha? Approved. Sherilyn? Approved. Roosevelt? Approved. Paul? Approved. Christy? Approved. Carol? Approved. She carries unanimously. Case 4M. A motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Francis and Bonio was made and seconded. Any discussion on case 4M? And then Brian? I approve. Nessa? Approve. Marsha? Approve. Sherilyn? Denied. Roosevelt? I approve. Paul? I approve. Christy? Approve. And Carol? Approve. Motion carried 7 to 1. Case 4, a motion to approve service connected disability benefits for Geneva Johnson was made and seconded. Any discussion on case 4 0? None. Brian? I approve. Vanessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Sherilyn? Denied. Rosa? I approve. Paul? I approve. 
motion carries five to three. Case 4P, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Robert Bradby was made and seconded. Any discussion on 4P? Brian? Halston. Vanessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Sherilyn? Denied. Roosevelt? Abstaining. Paul? Abstaining. Christy? Denied. And Carol? Denied. Motion fails zero to four with four abstentions. For Q, motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for David Chamberlain, made and seconded. Any discussion on case for Q? Brian? All approved. Nessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Sherilyn? Denied. Roosevelt? Approved. Paul? Approved. Christy? Approved. And Carol? Approved. The motion carries five to three. Case 4R, motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Rodney Merrill. Does made and seconded for any discussion on case 4R? Brian? I approve. Nessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Charlene? Denied. Roosevelt? I approve. Paul? I approve. Christy? 4R. 4R, yes. Denied. And Carol? Who? The vote was a tie, four to four, as the chair and votes will deny to break the tie. So the motion fails four to five. Case four S, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Yolanda Melvin was made and seconded. Any discussion on case four S? Brian? I approve. Vanessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Charlene? Denied. Roosevelt? I approve. Paul. Uh, approved. Christy. Denied. And Carol. Approved. This vote was a tie four to four as the chair vote to deny and so the motion fails four to five. Base board T. The motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Christopher O'Hole was made and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Hearing none, we'll move to the roll right. Approved. Vanessa approved. Marsha approved. Sherilyn denied. Roosevelt approved. Paul approved. Christy approved. And Carol approved. The motion to carry seven to one. Case four Q. Uh, motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for John Wolf was made in second year. Any discussion on case four U? Hearing none, Brian. I approve. Vanessa approved. Marsha approved. Sherilyn Denai. Roosevelt? Approved. Paul? Approved. Christy? Approved. Carol? Approved. Motion carries seven to one. That means the center to section five and case five A. Motion to approve the application for service connected death benefits regarding the lease bill. Is made and seconded. Any discussion on case five A? So, um, I like you said it over here then for the sensitivity of the case. And then um, um, who's going to present the evidence of the first related disability in the case? That's that's the question I got. And uh, that would be good. Let me know the slides. There was an alternative motion to send case 5A to a hearing panel. Is there a second? Second. Um, revised motion to send case 5A to a hearing panel was made and properly seconded. Any discussion on the revised motion? Hearing none, go to the roll. Brian? Approved. Vanessa? Approved. Marsha? Approved. Sherilyn? Approved. Roosevelt? Approved. Paul? Approved. Christy? Approved. And Carol? Approved. The revised motion carries unanimously. Case 5B, motion to approve the application for service connected death uh, benefits. The health question regarding Richard Nendez was made and seconded. Any discussion on case 5B? Hearing none, go to the roll, Brian. Aye. Vanessa, approve. Marsha, approve. Sherilyn, approve. Roosevelt, approve. Paul, approve. Christy, approve. And Carol. Mm -hmm. Should carries unanimously. Section six, case six A. 
The motion to approve the application for ordinary death benefits regarding Eric Tomofo, the deceased, was made and seconded. Any discussion on case 6 A? Bring on with the roll, Brian. Denied. Vanessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Shirley? Denied. Rosal? Denied. Paul? Denied. Christy? Denied. Carol? Denied. The motion bill is 0 to 8. Section 7, case 7A. A uh, motion to approve the application for survivorship benefits regarding the carnival day for the seats made and seconded and discussed on case 7A. Very none. Brian. Very none. Vanessa. Very Marshall. Very none. Sherilyn. Very none. Roosevelt. Very none. Paul. Very yeah. Christine. Very none. And Carol. Very none. The motion fails zero eight. Um, section eight, case eight A. Um, a motion to the permanent disqualification for Patrick Heron for pension eligibility was made and properly seconded. Before we do the roll call vote, are there any questions or discussion from the board on case eight A? Very now we'll go to the roll, Brian. I approve. Vanessa approved. Marsha approved. Chairman approved. Roosevelt approved. Paul approved. Christy approved. And Carol approved. The motion carries unanimously. Moves us into old business in case 9A. A motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Sean Brown, who's made and seconded. Any discussion on the case? Hearing none, Brian. I approved. Vanessa? Denied. Marsha? Denied. Sherilyn Benad, Roosevelt. I approve. Paul. Approved. Christine. Approved. And Carol. Approved. Motion carries five to three. Phase nine, nine B, a motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Elmer Carney was made and seconded. Any discussion on phase nine B? Very none. Brian. I approve. Nessa. Marshall. Benad. Sherilyn Benad. Roosevelt. Approved. Paul. Approved. Christy. Approved. Carol. Approved. Motion carries five to three. Case nine C. Motion to approve the service connected disability benefits for Rapita Moss was made and seconded. Any discussion on this case? <laughs> yeah, Brian. Denied. Vanessa. Denied. Marsha. Denied. Sherilyn. Denied. Roosevelt. Denied. Paul. Denied. Christine and Carol. Yeah. Motion bill zero to eight brings us into new business at the executive director. You see the materials being received on the Coriad Educational Conference. Also, this morning, you will see the NC cards on this day. I see closing. This was circulating to each of you. The NC cards is something that many of our trustees have. It's and passed the Gloria and some of our trustees also have been remote just to the motion for everyone who wanted to attend that. I'll make the motion that we are trustee or stay at one of the 10 meetings and then next to the conference. Second. Second. So where's the um in the state one model? Oh right here with the hybrids. Yeah, I see them. The motion was made and properly seconded, seconded regarding the conferences cited. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, go to the roll. Brian? Approved. Vanessa? Approved. Marsha? Approved. Sherilyn? Approved. Roosevelt? Approved. Paul? Approved. Christy? Approved. And Carol? Approved. The motion carries in. Just a few other things. The annual uh, CLA audit date. Um, just ready for the final documents for another issue for those. So, but the audit is a nice job by everyone. The uh, state audit is on the way. Maybe three years that first by the state auditor general. They received the data, all of our data that we gave to the effort that we should at this point. So, you see how that goes. The remember the December pension payroll, um, the checks are paid on 12 18. Direct deposit could be a day or two before that, depending on your financial institution. 
That is the December check. Just want everyone to understand that there is no check at the end of December. That is the December check. It's just paid early. The new next check will be in the normal pension payroll for January. There are some questions about that. So. The um, next employee retirement seminar is December 19th, 10 a.m. And well, we also have uh, Shabik is also arranged for representatives from TC33. And 47, so we're going to speak at that concerning health and retiree uh, benefits also. So that's again December 19, and then the information's available. You can get your tickets right now. So you know what's going to happen. She needs to start a chat, organizing all the parties, including the fair cop, uh, with her conferences. The medical uh, panel reviews, just to give you an update. As you know, our, our applications for service connected disability are up approximately 40% year over the year. Uh, that it requires to go to city council for a transfer in order to get additional funds to uh, pay the doctors. So that is supposed to be finalized today. We didn't get any questions on that. It's a modest about the merits of the role. Very short to me. FY25 operating budget. Uh, we received the initial documentation and that process is beginning. It's a, it's a long, slow process. So we'll end up in front of the council, usually beginning of April, sometime around, we'll get that. So that's uh, <laughs> I always measure it that way. So that, that's what's going on. Um, one other note I, I'd like to make now is that you may, you may all know if I'm pretty new, so. Our Chief Compliance Officer, um, Jim Sonis, will be retired in January. So, Jim, this is Jim's last board meeting. And uh, I think not only to the board, but, but to me, Jim has been uh, an indispensable part of what we do, making everything clear, making everything understandable, and uh, being there to give us confidence that. Anything that was being done right. And it's, um, you know, there's a, Jim will appreciate this to do his heritage, which is a quote that says, It's not what you leave behind, it's not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. So, and that Jim will recognize that as a quote from Athens' first man, Heritage. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something that. Uh, you know, Jim has taught so our lives so, you know, on different ways, and we really appreciate you and the, uh, the time that you have given to the board and, and everything that you've done. So, I would, I would personally thank you and appreciate it. And uh, I wanted to recognize you publicly for the work that you've done for the board and for the man we have to be attached <laughs> we follow your lead, Jim. I've never seen Jimmy Cut. I've never seen the television. I've never seen his lighting dance again. Yeah. 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 Fighting the time. Good for him. Thank you, Jeff. Here. Um, let me wait for the end. I can see Mark's ball of the video. Any other new business before you do our? It was listed a litigation summary. Any updates from the hall? Yes. Um, since the October meeting, one, two, three, four cases have been uh, denied or dismissed because of the file. And um, we have a couple of new cases that have not been scheduled. Yeah. Great. Alan and team. A motion to adjourn has been made and seconded. Hearing no objections, carried unanimously. We'll move into the deferred compensation portion of the meeting. Yeah. Um, my first, first item for deferred comp is approval of the meeting minutes from October 
motion was made and properly seconded to approve the minutes. <laughs> Any discussion? There's none. Let's go to the roll. Brian. I approve. Vanessa, I approve. Marsha. On the meeting minutes. Oh, approve. Francois. <laughs> uh, Roosevelt. Approved. Paul. Approved. This is the And Carol. Approved. Thank you. Motion carries seven to zero with one minute of extension. That is listen to the plan uh, activity update report. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Reporting out as of October 31st, deferred compensation plan assets were one billion. Seven hundred one million five hundred six thousand three hundred sixty one dollars. That's about one percent less than the month of September. There were twenty five thousand five hundred fourteen participants. That's a hundred and nine increase over the previous month. Actively deferring is on nineteen thousand seven hundred thirty seven. That's fifty five more than the month of September. New enrollments received in October was one hundred and ninety eight. Um, Year, that's about 51 more than the previous month. Year to date, there's about 1,619, um, where it's already exceeded last year. Total was around 1,591. So we've already achieved that. So many thanks for all your support in advocating, participating in the birth compensation plan. Also, also thanks to Brad and his team for a great job reaching out to new hires. Inactive participants, 5,777, that's 54 more than September. We report out the Philadelphia Parking Authority, there's 534 participants now, one enrolled in October. Philadelphia Housing Development Corporation, there's 43 participants, no changes there. The total marketing plan assets were 2 million. $867,369, that's about 3% less than the month of September. The total participant count is 1,032, which is about seven less than the previous month. The call volumes did go up a bit in the month of October. Um, we handled about 3,286 phone calls, which is about 128 more phone calls, and that's due to um, people receiving their statements in September. So that was a little bit of an uptick in the call volume. Online account, people continue to enroll online uh, and the numbers of tools that are there. There's now 19,456, which is about 100 more participants have set up an online account. That's about 76 participants that have an account balance that have actually set up the online web access. Percentage contribution in the month of October, there was 1,943. That is 33 more. Just a quick note. The percentage campaign was implemented in December. So those folks that were on dollar contributions did receive an email. We sent out an email to almost over 18,000 participants that are currently uh, contributing on a dollar basis, as well as the website has been updated to encourage folks to participate in the percentage options. The Roth, which is the after-tax contribution is 6,426 which is an increase of 130, 173 participants at uh, $45.8 million. Any questions for me? Yeah, I have a question. How do, how does our plan, I think that number of 76% of the participants have an online account. Terrific. How do we compare to other governmental entities in terms of our participation rates and our contribution rates, percentage of so, could you speak on that? Or maybe you could go back and look at it. It's a great question. Uh, we could, we would have to do a research on okay. it. On a plan similar in size. Yes, exactly. And provide the participation rate as well as the online engagement rate. Because I'm sure some of the contributing factors would be, I don't know if having the hybrid plan has made a difference in terms of the number of participants and, and also the participation level. So that's one thing that I'm thinking about. The other thing is governmental uh, entities comparing like for like. That, that, those are the Thank you. We'll follow up. Okay. Five minutes. Okay. Here. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank
Real quick being uh, so about 25% of participating in Ross, which is good. It's up. We want to keep yeah. pushing that. Right? So, yeah. It's does, but I think because we're watching it now, we're teaching it, we're pushing it. So I want to make that same point for percentage. We're about 5% or less of total participants. So that's something that I want to continue to monitor. So I want to say that to you so you know that, right? So we can push the education on that. That's a that's a huge tool for retirement that most of our folks won't understand until they do. Yeah. So now a very good point. 90% of participants are currently on a dollar basis. So the campaign that you all approved, um, you know, is allowing us to raise the awareness. So anybody that comes on the website, they see the banner, uh, which then if they need to compare. The difference between dollar versus percentage, they're able to actually view that and change their option. But yes, we will be monitoring it and we'll be watching the tracking uh, as well as um, the road. What is great about Rod is the younger folks that are yes. joining are enrolling. And if you look at the penetration of participants, the majority of the age group is 30 to 39, which is how it should be. Uh, and therefore, this is another great avenue we are tracking. My subject. Quick question on the transfer rollover. Why did it go from 32 to 155? Is that just drop rolling into the third count? So get the big retirement point? The transfer end of 132 participants? Well, no, the transfer of 155 in October. It's only 32 in September. That's a huge change. That's a huge. Because that's a lot of transfers that came in. Yeah, is that yeah. is that just speaking to the retirement level of folks kind of running the board right now? I do think it's a little bit of that. I would like to do a little bit. I would like to do some research before okay. I yeah, let me know. I have mine on. I want to see what's happening. All right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So in, in terms of uh, local office activity, um, there were 290 consultations conducted by the local office staff the month of October, resulting in 109 enrollments into the plan directly with the local office staff. Um, 17 consultations were conducted using the uh, My Interactive Retirement Planning Tool with participants. There were 23 group events or workshops that were done, whether virtually or in person, and those accounted for 617 total attendees to those uh, Events. Should we have some goals with regard to the, um, you know, when we have these seminars, should we try to have some goals in terms of the number of people that we try to get to enroll? I know we can't make people enroll, but should we be thinking about maybe it's more follow up and education that's needed? But we, I'm wondering if we should set some targets for that. I don't know. If other people have targets. That's just a question. I don't know if it's realistic to set a target. I don't know the answer. I'm just, I'm just asking a question. Um, because this in this space, it may not be yeah, realistic. Yeah, it's a. Right, it's, I think that should be. Not be okay. It's well, a, <laughs> it's a, it's an option, and it is a supplement to yes. and plan, right. and we are. It, it's really important to encourage folks to enroll, and we are tracking enrollment. It is exceeding compared to last year. However, it is really, really important as you are hiring new folks that we reach them and new employee orientations are an avenue for us. Uh, the PEP that you have recently added on, that's going to go live next year, and that's going to help us reach the Plan 10 and Plan 16 folks. That's going to be another option, and uh, with the combination of that plus on-site and encouragement on online enrollments with past, it's going to hopefully we'll be able to see further uptick in new enrollments. Is it really much advertising one day? Oh, I should do that. Okay, and we're going to um, um, share the results of the PEP on the on the ongoing base, basis to see who's taking action. Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll watch this space. Mm -hmm. Just to give kind of a quick example, if you think about the pattern of the new employee rotation and mm -hmm. how they all kind of work together. Yes. So if, if one of my representatives goes out to a new employee rotation, we can tr check who signed up and who did, and those people that didn't, we can put them into that pet plan under the enrollment. Uh, 
eligible. pipeline, if eligible. you will, eligible pipeline, then they'll get contact saying, oh, you were in a new orientation, you didn't sign up, here's more information, that type of stuff. So that's where how they kind of all work together. Okay, great. And will we be able to track that by employee uh, affiliation? Is that possible or department? Yeah. Affiliation, you, yes. You should not reference you. Okay. You I'm going to talk to one affiliation. But, no, but so then that, because if you go to orientation and you keep the track at who joined and who didn't join, right. then you would know if right. you had the police fire 33 or 47, who that group of people came from. That's what you say. So, Correct. You would know that specific group. That's what she, that's, orientation. Yeah. Right. You wouldn't know down the line if somebody that had been an active employee for 10 years and they call us and say, I want to sign up for the program. Oh, no, she was. You wouldn't ask them what union they're in at that time. No, no. She was saying you did the. If, if five people, the 10 people in the orientation class did not join. Yes. So you know you were at 33 when that happened. Right. So when you roll back out the pet, right, to that group of people, you know they're 33 people. Right. That's what she's saying. Right. Now you can. um. Check if they join and don't. That's the thought you should talk about. Right. The so not, not you, you, you could start do. building a database right. to understand from an affiliation perspective because we know that this is going to affect our lower wage earners first. Right. And our goal is to ensure that they're engaged and from an education perspective that we that we're sharing that information. So yeah, for the new employee orientations, we can right. we can track that information. Yeah. Right. Right. Because. We've done a great job. You guys have done a great job over the last several years, especially with DC 33 joining on the foreign cases, which they hadn't before. So this is a great opportunity for you guys to build a database to try to track who's in, who's not, and then have some targeted communications to those folks. Absolutely. Okay. I do have a question. So I read that Mercer is buying Vanguard. They're merging. Is that well? Can you let, let us know if that's going to be an impact on because we have a Vanguard, we have some Vanguard funds, right? Correct. Okay. I think it, it and I read something briefly. I think it's first response a division, a division of Vanguard, which I don't think it affects the mutual funds. But can, can you just let us know? Yeah, we can check okay. with ours. Right. Thank you. I think that was the third quarter report. Thanks, Jack. Good morning, everyone. So on the first couple of pages of the report, you'll just see a breakdown of the assets by mutual fund choice that's on page two and three, the 457. Just a couple of notes. Um, it sees some interesting differences between what folks in the 457 and the 401a are doing admittedly the 401a is a lot less money it's more recent but you can see that there's a much lower uh, percentage of the guaranteed fund uh, on the 401a side uh, than on the uh, 457 side which i think is just interesting to me today you're looking at participant behavior newer employees um, you know, perhaps younger employees on the floor of a side have you know, putting a little bit, uh, a little bit less money there. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Also, you'll see that um, on the 457 percent in the guaranteed fund, it's now below 40 percent. That's something that's been, it's been trying to get folks to diversify for quite a while, and uh, that continues to happen. In terms of the third quarter. Uh, performance um, over the longer term, you know, the five year period and beyond, I think it's a very good uh, performance in the 24 funds uh, ranking above the median. A little bit more of a struggle in the three year period, about a third of the funds uh, above the median. Uh, we are recommending a few things, as you'll see on page four. Uh, Harvard, you know, which continue to monitor them. Uh, their one year performance is uh, very, very strong. Uh, longer term performance, these three years uh, was still peak. Uh, they're underperforming on an absolute basis over five years, although as you'll see, um, 
and it's been tough for active managers making that space. They're still in the top 50 percent, even with that under performance. Uh, Mass Mutual continues to show strong and improving performance. They're in the top 50 percent over all the three periods, and then that continues to be ready to recommend uh, moving them from the bottom. Uh, American, Euro Pacific, uh, perhaps the bump for penny, closest to the penny to uh, all of them. They're only about to join them in one of the four periods. Uh, that's something that, that can take the United States to see a you know, recommendation coming uh, at the fourth quarter for it to be one of this bench here. Likewise, uh, Fidelity should remain on watch. And I think actually it's fair to say that those of the real estate money should be monitored uh, even closely if there are public questions about that. I think, um, and this has been discussed before, uh, I think as we move down their performance more closely in the end of the year, in the next year, you know, there's been some discussions in the past about um, you know, whether we people want to have to another discussion of cheap. Uh, funds like real estate in the plan, you know, that, you know, that, you know that, that's a worthwhile discussion to uh, have again, uh, you know, early in engineering. But no immediate um, you know, action items or recommended action items or replacements or restriction events. Any questions for the board? Move into and for the money market account. Yeah, just quickly, um, you know, this is the, the Vanguard money market account. This is where the Mr. State Fellows, E rebate, et cetera, are uh, deposited on you know, the number of the spent uh, balance. So a little over $162,000 at the end of the degree. Uh, the income received. Uh, Calendar year to date for $15,750.99. Um, only been one single expense here to date of $27,000 for the PC plan. Any questions from the board? Before we join deferred talk, I wanted to give Fran a chance to make formal remarks here. I want to throw it Preliminary guys in the report you will see, and uh, and I'm also uh, making comments. So, why you see an article on the paper yesterday concerning the various city fiscal strengths in the years? You know, part of that article was in the credit to Rob, who was working as finance chair. So, I'm going to move away from that a little bit to talk about some of the folks that were in the said the city's credit ratings are up. Sure, city treasurer is happy with that also. Um, but the pension <laughs> system's systems on public liability is down. One of the other things we were in there saying that, um, that that Rob and the administration have prioritized the pension fund, and that has won the day over the past two administrations. Right, the importance of funding the some other things from the article. Philly has now has its best combination of credit ratings in over 40 years. A big reason for the improved ratings is Philly's recent success in shoring up its municipal pension system, a trouble spot for many cities. Pension fund was only 44.8% funded when Kenny took office. It is now 57.6% funded. And the city projection will be 80% funded in five years. A remarkable turnaround driven by labor contract reforms, investment strategy changes, and a dedicated revenue stream from a sales tax increase, um, sales tax increase. And there's, there's some reports from your, and that's 57.6%. The draft Gasby that we've received, and this is not an official funding percentage, that won't be to the actual error. But it's showing us at 61.7% from the, for the upcoming year. For example, last year the gadget report showed us 56.1% from it, and we ended up at 57.6. So that 61.7 could be plus or minus a million. But let's say we'll be in that ballpark for the actual That's a 17% increase in funding since 
in 2016 at seven years, 17%. That came out to a little, little bit of research. We believe that that's unprecedented among you know, the pension banks. Um, absent them getting a large influx of money from, from a pension application bond or something like that. So it's, it's, it's a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment. But if you go back and, and look at some of the quotes that we received from State Auditor General, City Council resolution uh, sponsored by now Mayor Elect Parker, then Council Person Parker, commending the pension fund for the great work that it has done, increasing the funding percentage. Look at the GFOA award for the, uh, the progressiveness of passing the pension reforms. And you, if you look at what Pew said, concerning the next part, that the work shows that um, making that strengthening and useful pension part is possible. There's, it shows, look, we don't all have to agree, everyone doesn't have to agree on every single issue, but, you know, diversity of thought and healthy discussion is, is always a good thing. We should get you to the, to the best, the best decisions in the end, but it's possible to put aside whatever differences, the unions have differences with administrations. Administrations have differences with council. As you board might have differences with all of them, right? Depending, depending on the situation. But um, when you work towards a common goal, it's this board has done. Working towards a common goal, including the fund. And as Pew stated, it sure is filled out here has demonstrated that improved funding of the initial pension fund system is attainable. So, again, I just wanted to say, and I want to. Thank Rob for, for your leadership as chair of the board. That's all about finance for the junior defense. Your leadership and the steadfast position that this board has taken and the unions have taken is saying, look, we want to be reasonable. We want to try to improve the pension we can all of us working together, whether it's the city putting in extra money, the employee putting in a little bit of extra money, whatever the case may be. So we have 66,000 plus members and the taxpayers in the city, I want to thank all of you. Thank you, Rob, the administration, city council. It's, it's a great example and other legislative bodies and other governments particularly the federal government, should take note that actually you, you, you can accomplish things when you work in a a bipartisan and cooperative, collaborative matter. So uh, you all deserve a lot of credit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Frank said this has been ultimate example of teamwork and it is labor working together, working with legislators. So it has been a really big accomplishment for everybody. And the staff has been incredible. We've been to work with and we've done the amazing work too. So thank you for that. So the staff will see something. Similarly, as you come out, I would say, imagine how much better it would be if city council actually participated in the reforms, the communities participate. Imagine how much better it would be. I'll leave it there. <laughs> but that's great work, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, a motion to adjourn for a comp has been made and seconded. A discussion, carry done. We'll make a, a, a brief recess for about five minutes and then we'll move into the assessment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Again, is approval of the minutes after the October 23rd meeting. They moved to what was seconded to approve the minutes. We'll call the roll. Francois approved. Brian Harper. Roosevelt approved. Christy. Yeah, uh, Vanessa. I'm saying that I was in the right. Marcia. Oh, we're waiting on the minutes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> okay. And Madam Vice Chair. Approved. The minutes are approved. Good. <laughs> See all that singing? See all that you just gave on deck? Like, see, cut in the form red. Who's it all? I don't think I called you real quick, did I? They already skipped over you. Yeah, no, he didn't call me. Didn't okay. I didn't approve. That's how good my memory is. I'm getting you guys right. I didn't call. Okay. Get back to the report. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you, sir. All right. For the bond, we have been called. That's very impressive. So, for the bond, the bond was. In line, this benchmark actually slightly ahead for October, albeit on the downside, negative 2.2 to 2.3, um, and tracks uh, very closely with 10 to 20 basis points. Obviously, it was a large change, large reversal in November, basically, nearly the direct opposite. And if you look at the the estimated numbers through uh, through uh, Tuesday, December fifth, on up on twenty seven cases points for the month. Now to positive territory for the fiscal year about eighty one basis points for the calendar year would be uh, nearly seven point six percent. So it's a large, you know, large swing uh, for the last thirty day period. Um, we did send some notes out about a couple managers yesterday. We're happy to talk about it with additional questions. Uh, we'll also be getting uh, a more detailed update on Fidelity either later today or tomorrow. That was something the board had asked for previously. Uh, just to kind of get regular companies on the book to build on building managers. Um, you want to do this about Ariel? Yeah. yeah, so Ariel's uh, yeah. underperformance is a very uh, recent, uh, very uh, recent phenomenon. Um, we go back out of the six months uh, to June of 2023. Uh, you would see that um, they had outperformed the seventh of the 11th. 40 periods and were even since inception um, as recently as June. Um, Ariel is more prone to, uh, I would say, higher highs and lower lows for two reasons. One, they have an extremely concentrated portfolio of only 40, 50 stops. So they have a you know, small number of positions. And also, they're not just a value manager, but a deep value manager. So they're trying to buy things like what they consider to be uh, really big discounts. Meaning, if that position goes well, they're going to profit extraordinarily well. But they're also going to look the issue goes against us. There's going to be a short term you know, dip, in, dip in performance. Um, based on what we've seen, we don't have any. Uh, Concerns about their strategy, about their uh, longer term performance. Uh, and I would put you over a few hundred people that wanted to add anything. But we all, you know, beyond that. Can you just talk a little about specifically what happened? You know, why can't yeah. the big theory? So, there, if you, in the news yesterday, we highlighted, I think, from Marquette, highlighted two or three specific specific positions or the kind of development against them. They also they, they also uh, were underweight some of the sectors that did the best during that time period. Uh, so like energy, you wouldn't expect a manager like Ariel to actually take positions in energy as a main value manager. Uh, that had a uh, that had a very good month. Um, 
So is that one sorry? Did you they're not they're taking some wind to spec? Does that mean they're not doing quite what we hired them to do? No, is that a one No, I that I, I didn't phrase that or they I wouldn't expect them. Oh they, god. I'm sorry. They're I, doing what we would expect. I would expect them, I would not expect them very often to take a position or a heavy position in this sector like energy. That was consistent in the COVID and building out that it well. At least during that time period, a little commentator, price of oil, and nothing about seeing the first of the magazine. So then they should look better in November? <laughs> yes. You would think, I mean, based on having very little of them, it's going to be a function benefit. I was going to mention later, I mean, oil's now at its lowest point as of yesterday, since June, doing $70 a bed of barrel, having an underweight to energy, should be very benefit in you know, November. Yeah, the, the only thing to add is on uh, page 25 of the performance report, which is the uh, the calendar year return uh, for Ariel. So to Chris's comment earlier, if we look at them as a manager, you can look at them as a higher tracking error manager, meaning that, uh, again, when the highs are high, they're doing significant well versus the index. Uh, when they do miss, it is from a uh, essentially mispricing in the market of uh, some of the values that they have. So on 25, if you look at the calendar year return, you'll see 2017 comfortably outpaced the index, 2019 comfortably outpaced the index. When they underperformed in 2018, they won that significant um, of underperformance, but we see 2019, 2020, 21, and 2017. Uh, they did in the four quarters in 2017. So from a batting average standpoint, uh, they have a very strong batting average. They outperformed over more calendar year periods. Um, and then when we think about uh, the notion of them underperforming in short term periods, that underperformance may uh, look pretty meaningful over that short term period of time, but the snap dash is typically uh, you know, is equally strong. And this is from having a higher tracking error concentrated manager that again is very effective, low turnover uh, in the value space. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, as I noted, uh, we'll have a more formal, you know, update on fidelity not today, but tomorrow. Uh, that's in uh, twenty. Again, we talked about them a little last month. Recognized they've only been in the portfolio about a year, um, but I think it's you know fair to continue to monitor what they're doing. Um, you know, just given that. Supposed to get attacked a little more on the downside. It's a little volatility. Um, at least, you know, it's a late, it's a little one. They did have a good month, uh, but you know, I think that's the reason. It's totally reasonable, uh, you know, to provide, uh, you know, free up updates on that. Uh, real estate numbers obviously don't, you know, they come in quarterly. So, you know, just as a reminder, that's why you want to see any uh, numbers there. Yes, or Happy to take questions about any of the other developments. So you got this on them, you know, as well yesterday. Much like, uh, much like Ariel, AJ. Uh, much like uh, Ariel, if you go back for a period of time, and you know, we chose the end of the fiscal year in June of 23, and 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 that flat report, they outperformed every single uh, most in period five months ago. They also have outperformed so way this point on Ariel did not even get them after periods. Um, their recent underperformance is. <coughs> Most directly related to um, where they position themselves in terms of interest rates, all the longer duration uh, interest rates. Uh, I think you know, Marquette's uh, research feels that's an appropriate place to be. I, I would agree for them. Um, and I think, much like Ariel, um, they're much more prone given the interest rate sensitivity as well as a lot of the currency trading they do to have uh, larger swings. So you're going to see, um, you know, underperformance uh, maybe a little bit wider than some of the other managers, but then the outlook performance is going to be greater. And that's, you know, if you look at the exception to date, 
um, they were able to pretty good basis points about the performance that's you know, consistent with the better strategy. We talked about Brady Hey, what? So, aren't you negative in terms of I did again. I've talked about since inception. Inception today, three point four versus um, And again, if and I don't have the report in front of me, I'm pulling the numbers, but again, a couple of months ago, back in the show, after the building, this is nine and 11, or nine and 11 calendars. So it's a very short term, very short term phenomenon. So the brokerage uh, report, as you know, every quarter, uh, we update the board on how the uh, fixed income and equity the public market uh, managers uh, do in terms of the board's annual 35% aggregation target for local minority and women owned firms. Good quarter and good year to date numbers for the um, equity managers. For the quarter, 37% of all the trades went to follow bottom firms. The year to date, 43%. Capital group, again, they we talked about them a couple of years ago. Recent, relatively recent addition to the portfolio, they were uh, not doing any trading. We can see now the European. Up to 13 percent. Continue to work. Investors group is now up to 19. Ernest is a minority of African American firms, so no issues with his importance to them. They're now up to 20 percent of the county of the group. So, all in all, the general managers and locality are a positive place to be. Page three goes over uh, firms that receive uh, the trades in the first quarter, broken down by dollar percentage. And then, likewise, um, a little bit lower, but still very close to the aspirational target for the fixed income in the big basis. Um, Longfellow had a deeper quarter than normal. But again, they're looking at the third and the similar thing they have to be at the target. So I don't have the concerns there. Bad life, we're talking about some of the trading they do uh, in the last early reporting. How it's only done by the firms. So we're really seeing the concerns there. Um, and then Sid had a very good quarter. Uh, yeah, you'll recall they, they were managed to the first quarter. And actually, see they had 30 plus percent for a quarter to 25 percent. So they did continue to jump up and it's very strong. So, you know, Lord Abbott, it's sort of bad to them, but they're they a good year in the day. And that does happen where you see some managers are very lumpy in their trading or their balances. So some managers able to trade a lot in the first quarter, a lot in the fourth quarter, do a lot less trades than other quarters. Um, which is why you can see a wide disparity in the joint quarter. Is it done now? Or did we get that important? Wait, we just seen uh, uh, securities funding $126,797 on it. One point four six million pounds a year to date, three point four million since the inception of this development program. Both will reverse AUM on a combined basis. Close, you know, close to sixty percent dropped a little bit on the month of the month, just due to market market fluctuations. The first um, or 51.4%, excuse me, in the 
build up the surrounding town with nine to the four to two percent. And then the upcoming originally is twenty two or just who's looking at the Thursday, January 25th, February 22nd. In here, the question is, the individual for that old is special, then it is doing the topic of the year turn, we are adjourned. We uh, call the full board back into session. Uh, first, the agenda item. Uh, the motion is requested to confirm the actions taken by the best Second move properly seconded. Roll roll. Bruce Brian. Roosevelt. Misty. Uh, and now we get to one of those bittersweet moments that we have to announce the resignation of one of our board members. Um, I wanted to take a moment to thank you for what you working for. It really is a pleasure to work with you. The insights, the level headedness, you know, it's been great. great. So thank you for all your contributions. And then I have to thank you, Jim. Both of you. I want to thank you all for having me around this in the past few years with the knowledge that I've learned from the board and the amount of work that goes into keeping its pension board planning and risk management, HR. I've been a lot of people all the way. I mean, I have nothing but praise to say about everybody, and I really want to say thank you to all of you for all the work I do. So, um, I, my replacement is going to be. It's there. Uh, it's just like they quietly back. Uh, really, <laughs> they're not like I'm gonna wash it. Yeah, but what made the face? That is you. No, we be on those doors. Honestly, I, I have to say the work that goes on in here is like I, I, I try to tell our members how much work is done. So they can have an appreciation for what everybody does collectively. It's a knowledge, teaching them, telling them. And me and Marcia just talked about that. You know, we have some issues, and it's like, you know, it's let them know what's going on. And as soon as we do, you know, I can't say, Brandon up, Carol, Paul, everybody, Christy, welcome back. So uh, I, I just want to say thank you to everything. I really appreciate being here. And, I'm going to mention, but I'm still going to be around. My phone is still the same. My email is the same. My phone is oh, okay, so, good. Uh, I, listen, if you need me for anything, I'm Fine. definitely will be around. You know, big cheese now. Really big cheese. That's not the fucking events anymore. Rob, who? Rob, don't hate me. We've been talking for a long time. <laughs> Um, so now we have to, um, you know, figure out how to do uh, a full replace of development. So I'm going to ask uh, Judy to push the items here. Uh, thanks, Rob. The um, board has adopted a rule that provides the methods for filling the vacancy of an elected uh, board member. It depends upon the final amount of time left in party members' uh, term. Uh, if two or two or I'm sorry, two or less years remain in that term, then the successor is appointed by the elected, uh, the remaining elected board members. Um, in uh, Roosevelt, uh, 
um, there is less than two years remaining. He was uh, sworn in in October of 2021, and his resignation um, is effective then today. Yeah, I'd like to add to the remarks for the government and great to you to the history as well. And if, because there is less than two years remaining under the board rules, the successor uh, board member is appointed or selected by the remaining elected members. Um, so, uh, Madam Vice Chair, have the remaining elected members made a choice? Yes, so we have decided, we have elected Louis Sierra as the new representative of the elected trustee to place Louis Dopa. Thank you. <laughs> Jimmy Delphi, the next person who is confirmed that that selection is unanimous. Thanks, Jimmy. All right. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Um, so, what do we do next? One recommended step before the swearing in. That's um, uh, welcome. Um, so that the board, in essence, uh, approves or ratifies that and makes it the official action. Uh, I recommend that uh, there be a motion to. Uh, ratify the selection of William Sierra as the successor of the election. Is there a motion? I move that we um, ratify the election and the representation of William Sierra. William Sierra? William Sierra is my real name. What's the legal name? <laughs> William Sierra to, um, as a trusted to the board of Pitchman and Johnny. Uh, is there a second? So I will call the roll. Francois approved. Paul approved. Brian approved. Now Roosevelt resigned, right? So I don't see. Okay. So this time I really will speak to you. Marcia and Vice Chair approved. Congratulations. Now, I guess we'll take an oath. I guess we're out there. Yeah, I guess I have to get out there. Yeah, the door is right there. Right. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm going to miss you. No, no, I was saying. Sorry, I'm going to miss you. So, I'm going to miss you. So, I'm going to miss you. Okay. Or is it like our rules and procedures? Yeah. It's a square. Do I swear or affirm? Do I swear? Okay. Just to understand. Okay. That I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. I'm going to turn to the Commonwealth. I'm going to turn to the Commonwealth. I'm going to turn to the um, and then I will discharge the few members of the office where it is going to be retired. I should have gone more slowly. So, I'm definitely. I win here, I found this way. That I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of this Commonwealth. I just think this is the will of your home and child. And that I will discharge the duties of the member of the Bill of the Board of Pensions and retirement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to do this. I also want to take a little time to thank Jim for all that he's done. Um, he's been an amazing asset to the board. So he's always go to for guidance. He's been up there this last minute. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
but this has been a highlight of the community. Yeah. 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 I want to thank each and every board member for their support, for their fidelity, for their commitment to the system. I think all of the laws, 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 Ultimate chair blessing for their family uh, of these meetings, especially during the pandemic. Uh, to the uh, vice chair, I guess, Ron, and vice chair, Carol, for their support. And uh, so then we're always um, willing to you know, come to me to ask for advice. And those times, let's be telling me. Advocate for its members, but also for the board. And you know, the benefits of executive staff um, has been such a nicely helpful to me. Um, I can mention the uh, five. The assets that kind of like a super person on the photos, and it's Shanika, Shaheen, Steve, um, and Stacy, and uh, Ms. Kina. And so, and then I'm nicely grateful to you, Elizabeth, and Denise. It's not here anymore. Just then, the past year, it was so helpful to me with all of these uh, board meetings. Um, Elizabeth Biden will win awards for being able to record this thing in now. She's done very well on this. The requirement on this, she's uh, she's handled it flawlessly. Uh, investment staff has made me you know, welcome up in my office to help with investment staff. Uh, they like a family to me. Um, and uh, they've been uh, so uh, diligent, also complying. And yes, for advice and following the advice uh, for all to all of them, you know, try to put yourself spiritual God. I would agree. Then you always have the self gratitude that can be gratitude. So I think you can tell a smile and energy just um, up here. We're up there and for burn, you know, for his, um, as he calls it, Irish uh, charm. Uh, then, special mention, and Mariana and Crystal have come in and made it their, their own. Mariana uh, has brought fresh uh, insights and energy. Crystal has made it uh, the workspace and basically almost like home up there. And she's, so very helpful. And then uh, special attention to three very important people to me, Chris, for his uh, guidance and support. He was the former compliance officer. He gave me the information, uh, documents, and schedule tried this along the way. And it's also the uh, most any day that we're in the office or actually in the road. It's always been able to come up with something that's uh, going human or something in the situation. That can be critical to some of these days to uh, really use. I can turn to, I did turn to for a uh, fountain of knowledge, it's practical experience. There were some uh, very, very difficult uh, matters that we handled, uh, custom matters, and he 
he does the best teammate and that takes things down. Possibility to feed them without him, saddle size so to shave it down. And then finally, the person next to me on the right, the executive director, he came up with the quote for the barricades, which is I'll do this, but what is struck me is the words from the Beatles, most recent song, Down and Bang. We go across the age of Beatles, and it's more upsetting than what it is. The verse is, um, I know it's true. Yeah, that I know it's true, it's all because of you. Being it through, it's all because of you. And that captures, um, supposedly, like uh, John Ford Four, also captures the message by Starfield about friend. Thank you for your all the encouragement, the education. You know, friend knows uh, everything about all the intentions and, and beyond that, too. And he's always been helpful and he's always been willing to pull up his sleeves and help me. And he's, uh, he's been a consummate. Uh, Executive director uh, of this farm and the activity of a true public servant. Everything he does is to be, you know, make sure it's right, fair, and appropriate to not only for all of you, the board, uh, for all the members, but also for the employee on the staff that things he has done for the audience. At the end, the um, most thing I'll try to do is to see the staff Oh, that's so 